So who's ready for SummerSlam? Are you? 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 All of you? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know why the hell you clicked on this video. I don't know. I can say, personally, shirt and tie Schleich Daddy that says I haven't been able to watch much WWE over the past couple of months, I feel slightly refreshed for SummerSlam. Like, a lot of the stories, that, let's be honest, they don't matter anyways. I'm not invested in. So I can just tune in and kind of watch the show and see how it goes and see if it makes sense or not. Probably not, and I'll probably be ranting and raving and bitching and moaning like I'm prone to do and a lot of you deep down love for me to do come the SummerSlam review, which will come up after SummerSlam. Isn't that exciting? That's big news. Big tips for everyone. I like Peyton Royce fun bags because God forbid you like her natural. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about SummerSlam, huh? What's on the kickoff show? And I haven't prepared any whimsical things or anything like that. I literally have just typed up what the card is as far as I know. And I'm just going to spitball off. Let's see what the hell happens. You can imagine my surprise. Cruiserweight Championship is on the kickoff show. Does it matter? No. Has it ever mattered? No. Next. Let's see what we got. Rusev and Lana versus Andrade, Cien Almas, and Zelina Vega. I don't even know what the story here is. I don't know why it is. And I don't know that I particularly care. You go from Rusev having a world title match to having this match. Hmm. And again, it's on the kickoff show, so it's not like I'm watching. And frankly, not like a lot of you are watching anyway, so who cares? And the Raw Tag Team Championship is also on the kickoff show. The Revival versus the B-Team. This feels like a tag team match worthy of a kickoff show and nothing more. And nothing more. So many of y'all pumped up the revival to be something that I would actually like. And then I saw them and I'm like, eh. The B team shtick is cool for what the shtick is and that's pretty much it. It's a novelty. That's okay. And it's perfectly placed right there on the pre-show. Where again, I don't have to bother with watching. So now that we got away from that crap that doesn't matter at all, Let's talk about the crowd that really doesn't matter all that much, but we kind of sort of pretend like it does. The main car! Oh boy, what do we got? Oh, Finn Balor and Baron Corbin, excuse me, Constable Corbin, is still a fucking thing. And they're having a match at SummerSlam. Ow, oh, baby! What was the whole reason for this? Can't even remember. Was it because Finn knocked into Baron Corbin? Hey, who gives a shit? I think about this. The same guy a couple of years ago that so many of you were giggly tits about Winning the World Championship against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam is now in a damn near curtain jerker position against Constable fucking Corbin. And all I have to say about that is that's exactly where the hell he belongs. Gonna put this match on the pre-show and it'll been just fine with me. And frankly, just fine with oh so many of you. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Oh baby, let me guess the New Day against somebody. Yep, the Bludgeon Brothers! You can tell Vince came up with this stupid gimmick for the Bludgeon Brothers because they're the champs, and it's the only reason they're freaking champs. So you either come out of this with the Bludgeon Brothers still being boring tag team champions, or you get the New Day as tag champs again. Hmm. Well, I don't care about that either way. So next, Kevin Owens, Braun Strowman, for the Beast in the Bank contract, whatever, the Monster in the Bank contract. What the hell? Call. Call whatever I want to, damn it. Does anybody really think that Kevin Owens is going to win this? You know, it's a stipulation. If Braun loses the match in any way, including like countouts, DQs, uh, he loses the money in the bank. I mean, is that, is that where we're going to go with this? I mean, if you wanted to get some baby face heat on Kevin Owens, you have him. <laughs> beat Braun Strowman, which will get him booed, and then have him cash in the same night against Roman Reigns, which will make him the top babyface of the company. I don't know what the hell they're doing. It just feels like this is a gigantic waste, but they got to do something to fill the time. But do you really think Kevin Owens is going to be Braun Strowman here? Since after he got thrown off the top of the cage the last time, he technically won. Do you really think Braun's not going over here? Just saying. Feels like just something to fill time and waste time. 
which is exactly what we've got with the Intercontinental Championship. Seth Rollins once again apparently taking on, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> Fucked off Ziggler! One more time, in case you missed it. <laughs> Fucked off Ziggler! Oh, it feels so good, doesn't it? It feels good. It feels real good. <laughs> Fucked off Ziggler! <laughs> Fucked off Ziggler! And the fact that he's the Intercontinental Champion heading into a big four pay-per-view absolutely makes me sick to my stomach and gives me gross diarrhea. And Seth Rollins, Joey Numbers is right. You of all people should be the last one talking about anyone and anything. Fucking sitting there fucking around on your fiancé at the time with some flag-waving Nazi lesbian bitch. Like, how does that even work out? You're a Nazi and you're a lesbian. That just matches the hypocrisy of the freaking world. Who wins this? Nobody that fucking watches. I can't believe this is still a match, but it's like so many other things in <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler's career. It just finds a way to happen, and you just can't wait for everybody to move the hell up. United States Championship. Again, I haven't been watching, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Where's Randy Orton in this whole damn deal? You got Jeff Hardy, Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, is Randy Orton still going around and uh, touching his viper and trying to get everybody to shake his hand? Like, I'm sorry. No job is ever worth that. If you ever had somebody come up to you and you weren't down for that type of thing and tried to sit there and get you uh, to shake their hands, you didn't immediately kick them in the dick, then there's something fundamentally wrong with you. Uh, that said, uh, speaking of kicking people in the dick, the only thing I want to see is Shinsuke kick Hardy in the dick one time. Just whatever. A Nakamura nut crusher, and we move the hell on. Who wins? I don't know. Maybe Jeff Hardy. That way everybody can have a little bit of a moment here. So it feels like you're eating on this show in general. You're either going to get a ton of title changes or not very many. And frankly, at this point, I feel like you probably be better having a ton of title changes so that way you can reset yourself as you get ready to enter into NFL season. SmackDown Women's Championship, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Carmella. Oh, my! Can we just pass on this whole thing? On all of it, I'm good. I'm good. And at this point, in case you're wondering, it pretty much is how I feel about most of this show. I just don't care. And that's cool. Not everything is designed to be for everyone, and I shouldn't have to care about everything, and nor should you. There are four matches for different reasons I do give a crap about on this show. First one, of course, is Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. This is the match I care about the most on this show. This is the match that's been years in the making, and I know they've wrestled before in the past, but you get what I'm saying. Like, I have, don't have to watch the product every week, all the time, to be interested in this. The dynamics of this, these two guys, work for me. The number one reason that I'm bothered to watch this show is because of this match. Yes, I wish it happened at a WrestleMania, but I'm still glad we're getting it at a major pay-per-view where it deserves the type of run that it should get here. This should be a match of the night contender. Not because of the spots and the moves, because of the story and the execution. And I can't wait for it. And no matter what you do, you have The Miz win, cool. You have Daniel Bryan win, cool. Like, this is that match for me on this show. The hell with everything else. This is the match that I most want to see. And in my opinion, it's my main event of SummerSlam, even though I know it won't go on last, but I could make an argument, perhaps, that it should. The WWE Championship, Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, TNA Mid-2000s FTW! AJ's been a long-reigning champion, something you probably never thought was going to happen in WWE. Samoa Joe is getting yet another title shot, and this time at a big four pay-per-view something you probably thought you would never see out of him in WWE. I'm cool with this too. Yes, I've seen these guys wrestle over the years, but there's still like history and nostalgia there for me. AJ retains, makes sense. Samoa Joe wins, cool with that. Either way, I hope these guys can go out there and deliver the type of match between the two of them that I've come to expect out of them over the years. The Raw Women's Championship, Ronda Rousey challenging Alexa Bliss. And the Universal Championship, Roman Reigns taking on Brock Lesnar. Big surprise. <laughs> yeah. 
You would have to think at this point in time that one of these two matches is going to end in a squash. And I could make an argument either way. Like Ronda Rousey is supposed to be legit and badass and the Brock of your women's division. She should be destroying Alexa and squashing her in under a minute or two. Like this should not be competitive. This should not be a place where Alexa gets a bunch of shit in. This should be about Ronda Rousey going in there and kicking the ever of crap out of her and moving the hell on with their title. That's what everybody would believe. That would be believable to everybody. So why the hell would you fight against that and do anything other than that? Now, the real twist is you could sit there and find a way to keep Rousey away from the title and get some type of shenanigans or some other type of BS, and that's potentially the only other way you could go, in my opinion. But to make this a long, competitive, like, 10, 12-minute match between the two of them would seem like a poor utilization of the talent, the story, and the dynamics at play. The Raw Universal Championship... You have one of two ways you go with this. This is either a long, drag-out ass kicker, and you hope the crowd actually connects with it, or you're going to go into it, and you have Roman Reigns win, and you have him win quickly, have him win decisively. Those are the only two options. Now, you can sit there and say there's a third option of Braun and cashing in, but to me at that point in time, that's chicken shit. And it also doesn't do the most service to Braun Strowman in that character. Braun Strowman is the type of guy, why would he want to sit there and cash in and be cerebral about it and take his opportunity however it comes? He should be so big and badass and bold and confident and cocky about who the fuck he is and what the hell he can do when somebody gets these hands that he should want to call his shot. He should want somebody to have to think about what he's going to do to them for weeks. He should want to be something different. He should want to be something else. He should want to say, hey, at Survivor Series, whoever the champ is, you're my bitch. That's the way you go with that. Now, if you had Kevin Owens win for some inexplicable reason, then there is your third option, whatever, but do we really want to go there? The point is, though, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, you know damn good and well this is main eventing, or at least you would think. After all this time and fiddle-fucking around, this is your chance, WWE, to do what the hell you should have done at WrestleMania to begin with. Because everything else has just been one ginormous waste of time. And even if you hate Roman Reigns, and even if you detest his character and everything it stands for, and everything WWE is doing with their product and him as a result, I would think all of us would have to agree at this point in time that having a champion, a world champion, that is actually on your product every single week is far better than the alternative, which is Brock Lesnar still carrying the strap and going to UFC and fighting while he's still a universal champion for the WWE. Like you've been down this road. You've been down this road for way too damn long. It ain't working. It doesn't work. It's not drawing. And if you say Roman Reigns as champion isn't going to draw either. Well, Brock Lesnar isn't fucking either. And at least you could say you could potentially get more mileage with other guys by actually having your champ and Roman be on the show every freaking week. Not Brock Lesnar who's bothered to show up every couple of months. This is not rocket science. It's not hard to figure out. Me personally... If you want to make a statement and you want to compensate for the lack of courage and guts that the WWE showed at WrestleMania, the greatest Royal Rumble, then you have Roman Reigns squash Brock Lesnar here. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that Brock's going to sign off on that. That doesn't mean Brock is interested in that. And if that's the case, then so fucking be it. He might not want to play ball like that. So you might have to go the long, drawn-out affair. But... I hope that Brock Lesnar takes this seriously enough where he can be bothered to actually give a shit and put forth an effort. Because these guys can potentially do good stuff in the ring, but it won't matter if the crowd isn't interested. That's where, to me, if you're going to get the same reaction throughout, then why sit there and build up that reaction and emphasize it? Get to it as quickly as possible and fucking be done. So anyway, SummerSlam 2018. I at least have four matches that I can latch on to that I'm really interested in and I really care about. For different reasons, yes. But it's my reasons. So if you don't like them, eat shit! You have your reasons, I have mine. But we'll see what happens. Low expectations, which is WWE's trick now. Well, make sure you come back and check out the SummerSlam review because I'm sure one way or another, it's going to be a doozy! And eh, maybe I'll shave the hat by then too. Anyways, I'm the Schlag Daddy. Shirt and tie Schlag Daddy at that. This is OTRS Central. Remember, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. We'll see you later.